Hi, I'm Maya Pru, founder and executive director of Hope's Legacy Equine Rescue. Right now, with everything that's going on, we can't have visitors out to the farm, so we thought we would invite you to come along for a virtual tour of the property. So please join myself, Carolyn, and Rosie as we give you a tour of Castle Rock Farm, Hope's Legacy's permanent facility. We're so happy you could join us on this beautiful day at Castle Rock Farm. In 2017, Hope's Legacy purchased this property. It's 172 acres in western Elmiro County. And ever since that time, we've been building up this property into a working farm. We're so fortunate to have dedicated and talented volunteers. In the past year, we've grown the number of volunteers that we have by 40%. We've got 68 active volunteers that come out and do all kinds of things, not only feed and groom the horses and muck stalls, but they are building things, and we want to show you that here. As Rosie said earlier, we moved into this property in March of 2018, and this field, Field 1, is the first field that was actually fenced in as pasture for the horses. There are six acres in this field. It's one of our bigger fields. Let's go in and have a look at it. Here we are at the top of the field, and at the top of the hill in Field 1, and it's such a beautiful pasture. So as we pan around this field, you see there aren't any horses in it. It's because we pack, practice pasture rotation. And what that does is it allows the ground to rest between horses occupying it, and it helps with the growth of the grass. And as we look around in the field, you'll see a run-in shed, which we have a very, very generous supporter who donated this run-in to the rescue. And as we continue around, you'll see a hay hut. And the reason we have the hay hut is because this year we started feeding in round bales. The cost of an actual square bale of hay had grown so much because of the bad weather um, that it was just financially more efficient to go with a round bale. What the hay hut does is it protects the hay from nature, from rain. It also prevents the horses from pooping and peeing on it and turning it into a bed. So here we are in field two. It's one of our smaller fields. It's only one acre. It was one of the first fields that was installed here at Castle Rock Farm. It's typically where we bring new horses so they can become used to being here on the property. And also if horses are in quarantine, meaning we don't have any record of their vaccinations, the horses would be quarantined in this field for 21 to 30 days uh, before they're released uh, throughout the population of the other horses. Behind me is an example of some of the great work that our volunteers do. Um, we had volunteers build this run-in shed from the ground up, all the way from the footings to the roof. It's a great example of the work that they do here for the horses, and we really appreciate their hard work. This is Dave. He is a great example of just one of our many volunteers. He will do whatever the rescue needs, whether it's something for the horses or something for the farm. Here we are in front of field three. This was the third field to be fenced after we moved in. This field is two acres and we are going to get a closer look at the Meachams because just beyond the fencing on the far end of this field is a great view of, of the Meachams as well as the Tarpons field. Come walk with us down there. Here we are at the bottom of field three, and again, a great view of the Machins River, and it just sounds so soothing and so wonderful. And again, this is a great way to show how we are respectful of the Machins of the watershed and where we place our fencing. And if you are able to see across the Machins, there's another field there that the Tarpons live in. And we are caretakers for the Tarpons. That's a very special breed, of course, and we'll talk to you more about that in another video, so stay tuned, stay tuned for that. I also want to talk to you about feeding. So feeding the equines here at Hope's Legacy, it's done twice a day, every day. It doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing or flooding. No matter what nature is going, has going on, we have to come out and we feed twice a day. Um, we like to have two to three feeders on each feed shift. Um, to, just to get everything done that needs to be done. But again, it's another reason why we have the best volunteers. 
and along posts like this we actually have feed hooks we hang the feed buckets on so if you're not comfortable with the horse you can just hang the feed bucket from this side they eat and you take it back out if you are comfortable then you can go in and hang the feed bucket and take it back out we'll give you a little shot of the dogwoods that are in bloom here next to field three it's beautiful So we're here in field four. This is an old field that was here originally that we've renovated. And we have two horses, George and Bobby Earl, uh, who's very nosy and wants to figure out what's going on with everybody else in the other fields. This field is about two acres and uh, we've applied for some grant funding this year to do some renovation to the field and hopefully we will be doing that in 2020. Here we are at field five and also field six. We have a gate that can break these two fields down into two or one. So if the gates open, the horses have access to all four acres. If we have um, a couple of horses and we need to break it down to two different fields, we simply close this gate. They've got two acres here and two acres here. And because of the placement of the gates in this field, our wonderful volunteers built this style which gives our feeders convenient access to get to both fields the equines that are in them as well as the watering hose and their troughs that way they always have clean fresh water and we have easy access no matter which field they're in so here we are looking at field five back down toward the volunteer center and uh, you see diamond and giardelli here who are feasting on the spring grasses. We also wanted to show you our memory garden. Um, this was put in last September uh, through a generous donation from an anonymous donor. And we are mem memorializing the horses who have passed, who have come through Hope's Legacy and um, have unfortunately passed on. So we want to remember them. We give people a place to come it's right next to the Meacham, so it's very quiet. Uh, and come and think about their favorite horses that they knew through Hope's Legacy. Here with Dora at the Hope's Legacy two stall emergency medical barn which was installed in August of 2019 with the help of a generous grant from the Bama Works Foundation, a donation from an anonymous individual, and a donation from the Equus Foundation. And about <laughs> as soon as we installed it, the barn became occupied with Dora, who has a hoof injury. But this building has been a lifesaver. Uh, we were trying to use an old barn to um, house animals that needed stall rest. And it was on a slope, it was on a boggy part of the property. Uh, it just wasn't pleasant for either the horses or for the volunteers that had to take care of them. This barn has been a lifesaver. Uh, we've got Dora who's been here since September and we are also housing Cricket and Leilani in the next stall. And I can't tell you what a great place this has been for us. Here we are in the donkey field. I'm with Donkey here. He is our mascot. He is not available for adoption. We got Donkey in 2015 from the Peaceable Farm case up in Orange County. He was designated as a red tag. The red tags were the horses and donkeys that the vets felt needed to be removed from the property immediately or they were not going to survive. As you can see, Donkey survived. He's thrived and he's doing wonderfully. And now he gets to live in this gorgeous little paddock with his friend Dolly. So this is Dolly. We actually got Dolly specifically to be Donkey's companion. We got her from the Virginia Donkey Rescue and she will also spend the rest of her life here at Hope's Legacy. And over here we have our fat free paddock, which is not mean spirited. It's just that this is where our horses go who tend to founder. Right now we've got Minx the Dark Bay and May the Light Bay who are in 
this paddock because they both tend the founder and they have to be limited on their grass intake and their hay intake. However, they do get out and they get walks regularly. So they get a break from their view here. But the safest thing that you can do for a horse that tends to founder is give them this control of their grass and their hay intake. Come on in, we'd like to show you our feed room. We have all of our horses listed here. Every one of our horses gets a different diet. So we've got our morning and evening feed routine for all the different horses. And then we also have our hay board. So um, if the field is empty or if it has a hay hut or if we need to throw hay in the field, we have that outlined for the volunteers. Any changes that we need to make, it's on a whiteboard, so it's kept up to date right away. We have all of our feed buckets. As Carolyn told you, we hang the feed buckets on the side of the fence, um, and they're all labeled with the horses' names. We also have charts with their pictures up, so if volunteers are a little confused because we tend to have a lot of chestnuts and bays here at Castle Rock Farm, um, we show a picture of the horse and any special um, needs of the horse, uh, whether they like to be groomed or if they are um, for our more experienced volunteers to handle, we have that noted on there as well. And we have our feed. So um, as you can see, because of the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic that we have going on, we have uh, additional feed here for the horses in case we um, get stuck on supplies. So normally we do not have that much feed in the barn, but that's the reason that that's there. And then over on this side, oh, it's okay, Punk. This is Mayor Punk, <laughs> the mayor of Castle Rock Farm. Um, we have hay uh, that we feed uh, for the fields that don't have the hay huts. We still feed flakes in paddocks and um, We've got hay here for uh, future needs for the horses and the donkeys. We are so proud of what we've accomplished in the last two and a half years. And it's amazing to think that Hope's Legacy Equine Rescue was founded in 2008. And so here we are, 12 years later, almost 300 rescues later. And we have our forever home here at Castle Rock Farm. And the possibilities of Hope's Legacy Equine Rescue for the future, it's, they're limitless, thanks to you. Thanks to your generous support. Thank you for joining us today at Castle Rock Farm. It was a beautiful day. We hope we gave you a little bit of a respite of being at home. And hopefully one day soon, you'll be able to come out and meet the animals yourself in person.